It's Rich, Spade Jr. Without my red microphone, here in the new normal. Uh, how are y'all doing? Excellent. Love hearing that. Um, hope you're all staying safe. Hope you're all washing your hands and wearing your masks and uh, staying six feet away from anybody with whom you're not intimate, intimately connected. Um, so we're going to get into some question and answer. And I see already on the uh, on the uh, on the old text thread that it's uh, well, it's nauseatingly fast, which is great. It means a lot of people out there asking a lot of things. So luckily, I got new girl Brittany, who couldn't be less new at this point. She's been with the company for years, but nonetheless, a nickname is a nickname, and as far as I'm concerned, she's new girl Brittany. New girl Brittany sending me specific questions from you guys to help me narrow it down. So let's dive in, shall we? Um, hi, Rich. I'm Erica. If you could go back in time and relive one moment in your life, what would it be and why? I, there's probably several, but I would go back and relive the birth of all three of my sons. I have three boys. Steve. He's my oldest. Fletch, he's my middle. And Frank, he's my youngest. And if any of you listen to the podcast, the Kings of Con podcast that I do with Rob Benedict, you have heard, especially Frank, they, they pop into the podcast every now and then. Not by invitation. They just do it. Um, I would go back and relive their births. Uh, and it's not that I wasn't there for it. I was. But... Uh, I, you know, those are great moments. And certainly for Steve, I was, you know, scared out of my pants. He was my first. And now that I've embraced parenthood and I'm more comfortable in that role, I would go back and be less neurotic about the whole experience. And, and, and I would, you know, enjoy those, uh, those times with the boys when they were infants. And I wouldn't worry about losing sleep and I wouldn't worry about, uh, the small stuff, I would, I would savor the moments more, which I think a lot of parents say, because it's a very common, look, nobody gives you a manual on how to raise kids. It's new right out of the gate. So, you know, you have to study more to learn to drive a car. Uh, so I think a lot of people have that experience, but that's what I would do. I'd go back and, and be there for my, my little guy's uh, arrival into the, the world. Um, okay. Amanda Jane. What was your favorite part of playing the trickster? Was he fun? Was he as fun to film as it looked? Yes, I, I had a great time filming uh, that character <laughs> in every facet. I mean, you, when you're talking about when you're talking about filming, uh, playing the trickster, you know, you're talking about that character that I embraced for years, not only in the form of the trickster, but then Gabriel and then Loki, and so it was a you know a, a three pronged person really. Um, and I enjoyed every part of it. The, there's a certain freedom that comes with that character that enables you. There's no rules per se. So I was able to sort of invent that guy as, as, as I saw fit, especially in the beginning in tall tales and kind of sitting in the stadium seats, watching Dean get thrown around by women in their underwear, uh, which, you know, not a bad day's work for Jensen either um, uh, or the ladies. Uh, but f for me, I got to sort of just freewheel it and laugh and hoot and holler and make up some reactions. And, 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 and it, that creates a sort of lightness and levity and fun energy to that character that I thoroughly enjoyed and embraced throughout the run of the character, including even when it was revealed that character was Gabriel. Uh, you know, there's certainly Gabriel brings more responsibility to the role in that he was part of the big, uh, mythology of the series and um, had family ties to the story and everything else. But nonetheless, there is still a quirky glib energy to Gabriel that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and yes, it was very, very fun. And what it was my favorite part? Uh, my favorite part was being able to color, color in the lines the way I wanted the, you know, the, the fact that I wasn't uh, stuck into a framework uh, too solidly. There was a lot of leeway, a lot of 
um, room for me to play and have fun and, and build the character out that way in a way I thought worked best. And so that made it really creatively uh, stimulating and fun. Thank you for the question. Um, let's see. Phil O. How Gabriel contrived to get captured by Asmodeus and could not resist him. I don't know if I understand that question. Um, but uh, Gabriel, look, we know from the episode Unfinished Business that Gabriel uh, got out over his skis, as we say. Uh, got a little cocky, started throwing some parties, and welched on a deal earlier on in his relationship with Loki and got himself in trouble. You know, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't break a deal with a Norse god. And Gabriel did that, and he paid a price. And Asmodeus, or Asmodeus, depending on who you talk to, um, they, uh, you know, Asmodeus benefited from Gabriel's cockiness because uh, he got captured, and then he was a slave to Asmodeus. I don't think it had anything to do with resisting Asmodeus. I think Gabriel would have gotten the hell out of there if he could have, but... Asmodeus is powerful, powerful prince of hell. Um, oh, well, hold on, I got I to do something technical here. I got to refresh. All right, am I back? I think I'm back. I'm back. I had to refresh. Uh, all right. Um, La Larissa Taro. Larissa Taro. Hi. Hello. What kind of projects are you looking forward to be involved in in the future? Love from Brazil. Well, Brigado Brazil. Well, Brigado and Feliz Pascua. For those of you celebrating Easter there sometime soon. Um, I, I'm going to do... See this beard? See this bad boy? I got this beard because I'm going to go act in a western doing a Western called Old Henry, shooting actually right outside my hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. Stars Tim Blake Nelson and Stephen Dorff, and I'm super excited to be a part of it. Uh, a, who doesn't want to do a Western? B, I get to go to my hometown. And C, it'd be nice to act in something. I've been directing a lot the last couple of years. It'll be fun to make somebody else do the heavy lifting, and I'll come in and do the acting. That'll be fun. So that's what's next for me. And, uh, Stay tuned here for, uh, well, not specifically here because this will close down after my panel, but to my Twitter and, and everything else, and I'll let you know uh, when that movie is going to come out and where you can go check it out. Um, also, I'm doing a podcast with Rob Benedict all the time. Rob and I are always doing a podcast weekly called Kings of Con, the podcast, where we bug the living crap out of each other and interview guests from the convention world. We've had Jensen Ackles. We've had Tom Ellis. Rachel Harris, Kurt Fuller, uh, and we have a great list of people coming up. So check out Kings of Con, the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And we have a Patreon site where we show the entire video of the interviews as well. So you can check that out and enjoy that uh, along with the audio portion. All right, next up, Ash Winchester. Well, that's ironic. Your name's Ash Winchester. Sam and Dean's last name in the show is Winchester. What are the odds? Um, hey, Rich, I'm Ash. Hello, Ash, I'm Rich. Uh, would you like to make an appearance in Lucifer? Love you from Argentina. Well, thank you, Argentina, for loving me. And I love you back. Um, I would love to be in Lucifer. I just directed my fourth episode of that show, um, which has been just a delight. They're lovely people. And uh, Tom Ellis is a prince. Lauren German is uh, just absolutely hilarious and heartbreaking at the same time. What a, what a multifaceted talent she is. Amy Garcia, um, Leslie Ann, also great. Rachel Harris, just the darndest. D.B. Woodside, a giant hunk of awesome. Uh, so I would love to be in that show. I would love to be in that show. In fact, I'm kind of... Uh, harassing them about being in that show. They may never let me do it, but 
I have, I have, I have unapologetically hit up Ildi, the showrunner, and, and Joe, the showrunner. Look at my hair. Oh, Lord. Um, I've hit them up to say, hey, put me in your show. So I'm not shy about asking. You know what I mean? Uh, in fact, I would say if any of you are on Twitter, you should absolutely uh, bug Ildi. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up her, uh, her Twitter handle right now. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so let's see. I'm on Twitter. And I'm going to go to Ildi. This is the showrunner, co-showrunner co of Lucifer. And this is going to be great. She's going to love this. Okay. It's uh, Ildi Mojo. Ildi Mojo. Go bother Ildi Mojo. And uh, tell her you think Rich Spate should be in the um, in Lucifer. And let's see. Joe. Joe. And then while you're at it, tag this fella. Henderson underscore Joe. That's Henderson underscore Joe. Uh, he's the other showrunner. So bug Ildi and Joe and tell them that, damn it, you love it when Richard Spade directs the show, but you want to see him on the show because I want to do Lucifer, and I've been bugging him. And like I said, I apologize for nothing. I'm going to pester those folks until they let me in because uh, they're awesome folks. I consider them friends of mine, and I feel totally comfortable bugging the living crap out of them. And I certainly feel comfortable enlisting you all to help me do that. So you have been hired as my official Lucifer pesterers, Ildi and Joe. Give them hell. And maybe I'll get to go to hell. Um, all right. Let's see. Thank you for that question. What was your favorite? Oh, this is from Mickey Beatty. Uh, or Beatty. What was your favorite Kings of Con episode to film? Oh, man. Kings of Con, which is on Amazon Prime now. Kings of Con is the series I made with Rob Benedict that features Matt Cohen, Kim Rhodes, uh, uh, Kurt Fuller, uh, Carly Yankin, um, who else from our, uh, our uh, Gil McKinney, Sebastian Roche. Uh, did I say Matt Cohen? Matt Cohen. Uh, it's a great show, super funny, and I directed the episodes robin and I, and I wrote every episode and produced the show what was my favorite episode to shoot i i don't remember the the episode title or name but it's the episode where rob goes to um gosh i'm, I'm drawing a blank the british dudes uh josh myers is the actor he he goes he goes to that guy's room uh, the British actor who reveals himself to maybe not be British. Uh, I, watching that scene filmed between Rob and and Josh Myers, just I was literally weeping with laughter. It was so freaking funny. So that was one of my favorite scenes to, to film. I also wasn't in that scene at all, so there was no pressure on me. It was just a good time to watch Rob Benedict be hilarious and Josh Myers be hilarious, and they're good friends, so they were able to be hilarious together. And that character was loosely based on Tim Amundsen, which is funny because Tim's a good buddy. So it was fun sort of poking fun at Tim through another character. That episode. What is that? What the hell is that episode called? Um, they're all named after. Uh, they're all they're all named after. Um, city. So I don't remember which city it was. What's, what's the character name? Josh, now I'm going to look it up because now it's driving me nuts. Um, who does Josh Myers play in Kings of Con? Um, well, that's a hockey player. Hold on. Uh, Josh Myers, career. Oh, stop it. Um, Josh Myers, IMDb. I'm on his IMDb. We're going to get to the bottom of it right now. Um, little bit. King's gone. Kent O'Grady. Kent O'Grady. That's the character name. Um, 
Uh, and I don't know the episode. But there you go. Um, and it's on Prime Video. You can watch it on Prime Video. Uh, okay. P.S. Cloud. Or Peace Cloud. Um, as a viewer, what is your favorite episode of Supernatural? Swan Song. Tied with French Mistake. Cliched answers? Maybe. But those are great shows. Great episodes. French Mistake, to me, is one of the cleverest episodes of television I've ever seen. So well done. Hilarious stem to stern. So, and Swan Song was just so gut-wrenching with the footage of the guys as boys. Damn good show. Um, Oxanne. She sent me this message. Hi, Richard. How is it like to work with Shoshana, Shoshana Stern and Tim Olmsen again after your show, Jericho? Love from France. Well, j'aime France. Merci pour la question. Um, uh, it was fantastic. Shoshana, not only did I work with her, but she shadowed me as a director because she is a she's a creator of shows herself. She's made her own TV series that she stars in. She writes, produces, and a fantastic actress, and now has uh, and now is is looking into getting into directing. And she shadowed me, and that was just a blast because we already knew each other, but we hadn't spent that much intense time together like like you do when you're directing and shadowing. So it was fantastic. Um, this is coffee, by the way. I don't want to hear any guff from anybody. Um, Tim Robinson. What can I say about Tim Owens? A friend of mine from college. Known him since I was 18. Looked up to him since I was 18. I think the world of that guy. Class act, great performer, funny dude, painfully handsome, wonderful speaking voice, hell of a harmonica player, and dashing dresser all day, every day. Uh, I wish we'd gotten to work together on Supernatural. I wish I'd either gotten to direct him or act alongside him. I think his character of Kane is one of the coolest characters to be in the show. I wish they had kept that character in longer. I thought it was just a fantastic character. Um, sadly, like all things Supernatural, some of the characters you love the most, like Kane and or Gabriel, don't stick around as long as you want. But I loved him. And I, I look forward to sharing the screen with him again at some point or directing him in something because he's just a I mean, he checks all the boxes in terms of a human being and performer. Um, Mina uh, from Hell, Mina from Hell, do you think Gabriel or Misha would win on a prank war, in a prank war? I think uh, Misha would. Because Gabriel, at the end of the day, has a moral compass and Misha doesn't. He's a loose cannon. And we'll do anything. Misha's is a wonderful man. He's a sick puppy, and that's why I love him. Um, Aline Debolt or Aline Debolt. Hi, Richard. Well, hello. I'm from Mexico. What was the hardest scene to play when you were the trickster? Well, I'm going to say trickster means anything I played in the show, and I'm going to go with unfinished business. Um. The episode where I directed, and I played Loki, and I played Gabriel. And at one point, Gabriel and Loki fought each other, and I directed it. So it was me directing me to kick my own ass. That was the most challenging scene I ever did in Supernatural as an actor, because I had to cover all the bases. Both people on film and the guy shooting the scene. This guy. So that was the, difficult, that was the most difficult. Um... Clear Dawn, or Sierra Dawn, hold on, S Sierra Dawn. Hey, Rich, hi. If Gabriel hadn't died in the alternate world, what do you think would have been next for him? I think he would have opened a pastry shop uh, near the boys. He enjoys sweets, he enjoys people, he enjoys pleasing people, uh, he was on the side of humanity. I think that would have covered all the bases. Um, 
might not have been the best chef in the world, but he could have hired somebody who had that talent and he could have just been the face of the operation. But I think he would have gotten into pastries on the sweeter side, not necessarily breads and that kind of thing. Purely pastries, cream filled stuff, donuts, you know, bear claws, that kind of thing. Um, Nicole Erica, what are you proud of but never had an excuse to talk about? Love from Argentina. Well, love to you too, Argentina. What am I proud of? Uh, proud of that map. Frank and I did that map during lockdown. I mean, it's we didn't make it, but it comes in small pieces. We put that together. That was a fun father son thing. Um, I did a lot of construction in my first house, cutting a lot of baseboard and doing a lot of, of the basic manual labor, uh, which was something I'd never done before. And I, I thought that was super awesome. I'm proud of that. Um, I'm enjoying being a teacher during lockdown. I'm enjoying working with my children to help their education forge forward during these weird times. I'm proud of them. And so I don't know if that's proud of me, but I'm enjoying honing the craft of patience and um, learning how best to help them. It's one thing to understand a concept. It's a very different thing to be able to explain it to somebody else in a way that they also understand it without frustrating them or yourself and without losing some of the information in the process. So I have the utmost respect for teachers, always have. Teachers have meant a lot to me over my life. My mother-in-law is a retired teacher. My sister-in-law is a current teacher. I've always been a fan of being a student. And stepping into this role in lockdown has been a real challenge and one that I have really enjoyed. Um, so it's a, not quite on topic because I'm more proud of the boys than, than I am myself. But nonetheless, it's a team sport. It's a team process. And I think we're doing pretty damn well. Um, okay. Here we go. Hello, Mr. Spate. Sorry, I'm looking at the... Uh, Kate from Cleek. Hello, Mr. Spate. What's your fave character in SBN? Love you. Love you, too. My favorite character... Well, it's a tough one. We're going to go with uh, my characters, the ones I play. Those are my faves. Um, Destiel Cannon at. Hey, Rich. I'm Nat. Hello, Nat. From Brazil. Do you think Gabe is still alive around there? If so, where in the world? I love you so much. Well, what does it say? Um, is there an alternate world of Gabe? Because the Gabe that got killed in the alternate world was the real world Gabe that went to the alternate world. So... Is there an alternate world version of Gabe? Maybe. The alternate world is not a great place. It's pretty barren. So I don't know if he's all that stoked to be stuck there, but uh, there might be an alternate version of Gabriel floating around out there. Uh, and if he is, he's probably bummed that he's stuck in that world because, like I say, it's a little dusty for you know. He's more of a Monte Carlo, nice hotel guy. The whole live in a cave and apocalypse sort of surroundings, not his cup of tea. So I'm sure wherever he is in that world, he's a little bummed. Um, Rebecca 17 or Reb 17. Hey, Richard, I'm Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. Question. How do you feel when directing 1518? Despair. Episode 1518. How many of you have seen episode 1518? Cool. Awesome. Well, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Uh, I loved it. It was, a, it was, I love every single thing I've done in Supernatural. It's been a real gift, a real blessing. I've loved acting in it. I've loved shadowing directors. I've loved doing conventions for the show. I've loved traveling with the actors in support of the show. And I love directing episodes of that show and getting to direct the third to last episode of the entire series was the greatest gift I've been given as a director so far, because that story means a lot. That journey means a lot. Like Cass's journey means a lot. And everything that happened in that episode was 
you know, significant and meaningful. And that was uh, awesome. So the answer to your question is, how was it? It was awesome. How did I feel? I felt proud to be a part of that specific episode. I was moved by the performances deeply. That scene with Jensen and, and Misha was a beautiful piece of acting, a uh, beautiful piece of writing. And I'm not saying that because it was my job. I'm saying that because I'm a human being, and that was a lovely scene. Really, really, really moved by it. So it was an honor and a pleasure to be there for that and to watch it play out. Uh, Nava Fiel. Hello, Richard. My question is, what traits and qualities of character do you like and don't like in your character and why? Um, well, I love Gabriel's, you know, levity, the fun-loving spirit. I don't like the fact that he's a bit irresponsible and doesn't take his role as a member of the family seriously. I think uh, he should have more pride in himself and not worry, worry less about partying and more about being a part of the family, part of the solution. Um, I think when he had the opportunity to do something seriously for the boys and step up and, you know, run heaven, he should have jumped at the chance. Um, I think he should have had more faith in himself. You know, he was a bit of a clown. And I think he saw himself as a clown and that's sad when somebody does that. It's one thing to be a loose cannon, but if you are a loose cannon because you feel like you have no other role in life, well, that's sad a little bit. So I feel like that's a bit of a tragic element to the character. And I think one thing I really didn't like about Gabriel is he kept trying to fight his brothers because that always got him killed. Tried it, one, tried it once with Lucifer, got iced. Years later, tried the same thing with Michael. Same result. Don't fight your brothers, dude. You're good at a lot of things, but fighting's not one of them. Oh, that's my opinion on that. Um, Carrie, LFC. Hi, Rich. What aspect of directing do you enjoy the most? Is there anything you've learned from acting that helps you in directing? Well, there's a ton. You love my work. Thank you. There's a ton that I've learned from acting um, that helps. It, it all helps. Acting has been my bread and butter for 30 years. I spent a lot of times on sets breaking down characters and studying emotion and watching other people work. And, and that's been the bedrock of my entire career, learning all those things uh, and using them as a director. I uh, truly use every element of my acting abilities as a director, how I move the people, how I elicit the emotions I want, I play every character in my head, essentially, when I'm directing. And that makes it the fact that I have the knowledge and skill set to do that, or at least pretend to do that, really, really helps me. Um, what do I enjoy most? I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the achievement of getting a scene up on its feet with the idea that you've had, that you've been baking for a long time in your brain. You put it up there. The actors start doing their job. The camera guys start doing their job. The lighting team is doing their job. And all of a sudden, th something that was in your brain, in your imagination, now is coming to life in front of you. And it's looking awesome. Or if it's not looking awesome, you fix it and make it look awesome. And that camaraderie, that sense of spirit of everyone there working towards the same goal, of making something honest and true and real and fabulous and maybe funny or maybe dramatic or maybe sad, that to me, that camaraderie, that energy, that shared artistic experience that must be there to create good television, that is what I love. That is what fuels me. Uh, and that's what draws me back to the director's chair again and again. Um, Alicia. Hi, I'm Alicia. Hi, I'm Rich. What European country would you like to, to visit? Prague count as a European country? Um, I've always wanted to go to Prague. Uh, I am a massive fan of France. I'm a massive fan of Spain. I haven't spent a ton of time in Spain, but I love what I love the Spanish culture and the language. My wife loves Spain. Um, I would love to spend more time. In, I'd love to spend enough time in France to get fluent in the language. And I love Italy, man. We we go to Rome for these conventions every year. 
And I've become friends with that whole group of people, and I love their culture. I've been studying Italian on Duolingo. Uh, Yo ho fame. I can say I'm hungry. Um, yeah. Grazie per la collaborazione. Although I've been able to say that for years. Uh, I uh, would love to spend enough time in Italy to be fluent. I'd love to spend enough time in France to be fluent. I'd love to visit Prague. Um, I would love to... I've been to Norway and love it. Uh, I just love Europe. I would love to spend a whole chunk of time all over Europe, traveling around by train. This train is dope and very European. Um, yeah, I love Germany. I've gotten to spend some time there. That's fantastic. Uh, I've never been to Portugal. Um, anyway, I, I can't narrow it down. I love it all. I love Europe so much. I know the UK is no longer Europe, but I love the UK. Um, or maybe it still is now, but who knows? Point is, I love all things. I love all things over there. Over there. Um, Camille Silva. Do you think Castiel and Gabe were close when Gabriel was still living in heaven? Gabriel being kind of a protective brother, perhaps? Hard to say. Castiel's real quiet. You know, very monosyllabic. I don't think so, Dean. Um, Gabriel's more of a, let's go out and do some stuff, man. Let's some shake some shit up, you know? Let's get some cocktails going and get the ladies over here. What do you think, Cass? I don't know. So, I don't know how tight they were. I really can't. I mean, I would guess they were civil, got along well, in the sort of way that opposites get along. But I can't see them being college roommates, you know? Um... Hard to say, but whatever you think, I also agree with you. Um, gayer than you? That's a funny uh, screen name. Gayer than you. And if I'm saying it wrong, if it's gayer than how or something, then I apologize. But it looks like gayer than you to me. Uh, gayer than you. Hi, Richard. Any tips for first-time directors? Yes. Direct. You won't get better until you start doing it. You won't improve until you start doing it. So don't get hung up by nerves or fear. Find a story, grab your phone, and go shoot it. You have all you need. You have more than any film school ha had 10 years ago right here in your pocket. I don't care if it's an iPhone or any kind of phone. You can take movies with your phone. You probably have an editing software on your phone. If you don't, you could probably get one very cheaply and then go make your movies and work on telling your stories. And some of them will be great and some of them will be garbage, but that's how you get better doing well, doing poorly. You learn from both. So get out there. Don't make excuses, make movies. Good luck. Um, Marina, uh, Mariana Gran Granados asked or Granados when you played the trickster, did you know he was actually the Archangel Gabriel? No, did not. I thought he was a janitor with a few special powers. And then I realized he was a trickster. But I thought I got hired to do one episode of the show. I thought I'd be doing one episode and that would be it. So that's all I knew was that he was a trickster messing with the boys that one time. Beyond that, I learned it when you learned it. All new to me. And I'm glad they decided to do that with the character. It was very cool. Um, Forever Robin. Hi, Rich. My daughter, Julia, and I want to know if you could put Sam and Dean in any TV show similar to Changing Channels, which would it be? Uh, Judge Judy. That'd be a good one. Um, Teletubbies would be fun. I'd like to see them in The Simpsons. Um, Bob's Burgers. I'm a big fan of Bob's Burgers. I also uh, think they'd be fun to be in Game of Thrones when that was a television program. Uh, and The Crown could have a lot of fun with Jared and Jensen as they fumbled their way through British royalty. Uh, all right, let's see. Short McKenzie. Hi, Rich. Hi. I'm McKenzie. What was your favorite part of the finale? 
or your least favorite part? Well, I look at the favorite favorite part um, was the scene with Jared and Jensen in the barn. I thought it was just outstanding acting. I was moved. I was touched. I was blown away, and yet not surprised because they always deliver. But man, that was a good scene, and man, that had to be hard to shoot because it would be hard to shoot anyway. But when you factor in that it was wrapping up the show and wrapping up their connection on screen, shit, man, that had to be really hard. So I just, I loved that scene. That scene was great. Well done, well shot by Bob Singer. Just a great scene. My least favorite part of it, my least favorite part of the finale is that it was the finale. I have loved being a part of this show for 14 of its 15 seasons, and I will miss it dearly. So that part. Makes me sad. Bia Feria or Feria. Hi, Rich. I'm Bia. And my question is, if you could go back in time and change something in SPN, what would it be? Me in Brazil loves you. Thank you, you in Brazil. I would not kill me. I would keep me alive and use me a lot more in the show. Back in season five. I would not die, but I would stick around. And then the next time I died, I also would have stuck around then too. Um, Betsa, be, uh, let's say, hold on, Betsabi or Betsabe Winchester. I'm butchering that, I'm sure. Hi, Rich. I'm Betsabe or Betsabi or B to Sabe. Um, do you like acting or directing more or writing? Love of Mexico. Can't pick. Love them all. They're all very different. Um, if you love sports. Baseball, football, and basketball, they're all sports, but they're all different. Writing, directing, and acting are all very different. As an actor, I'm a chess piece. As a director, I'm a chess player. I love being able to tell the grand stories as a director. I love being able to focus on one element and work on that and master that as a, as a direct uh, actor. And I love starting from scratch and creating something out of nothing as a writer. I, there's great benefits to all of these things. Um, I gotta go to court to plug in my computer. Give me two seconds. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm back. Battery's dying on me. And my son stole took my cords. Because they're all doing distance learning here at the house. Um, all right. What's next? Uh, flying with Al. Hey, oh, Danielle here. Would you ever consider doing a Gabriel spinoff? Well, yeah. And it's not up to me, unfortunately, but of course I would. I'll do it in a heartbeat. Sadly, I don't get to make that decision. And since they keep killing the mofo, I doubt I'll get that choice. But I like the way you think. Um, hi, Rich. Uh, Dean's Misha says, hi, Rich. I'm Carol. What is your favorite Supernatural season? Love you. Uh, all the ones that I'm in. And I'm going to go with 13 because that's the one where I was in the most. Really enjoyed getting to come back and revisit that character that many years later. Um, I'm thrilled that I was part of the Eric Kripke years early on, but I'm going to go with 13 because I got to come in and be a part of the show in a bigger way and direct myself playing two different characters, professional opportunity of a lifetime. Um, Cindy Riddell, Rich, what experience from acting have you learned the most from? Love from Minnesota. Thank you, Minnesota. Um, Band of Brothers was the most educational acting job I've ever had because it was about real people doing real things that were real hard. Um, and the bonding I experienced with the other actors and the writers and the way that was shot and that whole experience. Nothing about Band of Brothers. There's nothing about Band of Brothers that I don't cherish. So I learned more about myself as a person, performer, and man and American and patriot. Everything from doing Band of Brothers. That was my my biggest educational experience. And worked with so many different great actors 
from the UK and all over Europe and the States that it was a great education in that regard as well. <laughs> Eba asked me, Richard, do you think you will travel more or less now with Supernatural over? Well, less, especially with COVID. I'm not going anywhere, really. Uh, COVID has brought everybody and everything that I was doing before to a screeching halt. So I don't know when any kind of travel will resume. But for now, we're all, we're doing this, kid. We're doing it on screens, being safe, and, you know, staying healthy and staying out of airplanes and off trains and, you know, doing what we can do to be part of the global force that brings this, uh, brings this whole COVID nonsense to his knees. But even when that's over, I think travel will be different. I think life will be different, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Either way, I want you and everybody, including myself, to stay healthy. Do what you got to do to do the right thing. Um, Klepto Monkeyak. Uh, hey, Rich. I'm Mo. Hey, Mo. What's your favorite flavor of Pop-Tart? Still brown sugar cinnamon? I don't think I ever said that. I think that's a Rob thing. I'm not a Pop-Tart guy. Can't wait to see you again in, in Plano. I, I, you're probably quoting Rob or Matt. I'm not a Pop-Tart dude. I, I may have agreed with those dudes at one point. I, I don't really like pop tarts, um, so I hate to be that guy. But uh, not really a pop tart fan. I don't even know what other flavors there are. But uh, if you like brown sugar cinnamon, I'm sure I do too. Um, Luana Galette, hi Rich. What's your favorite movie from all the times? Love from Brazil. Oh, that's hard to say. The Deer Hunter. Shawshank Redemption, The Jerk, uh, The Little Mermaid. I love movies. Uh, I, I, I couldn't begin to pick a favorite. I enjoy outstanding filmmaking. Uh, Take Shelter, one of my favorite movies. I love movies, so I don't really have a favorite. Um, I am blessed with a, with a varied taste in films and enjoy seeing many, many styles and many kinds of films. And see as many, used to see a ton more than I do now. Parenthood sort of slowed down my my um, my ability to see movies. A quick quick headline headline. Uh, Hillary Handler Hillary, the woman who has been cursed with the chore of escorting me around conventions for the last few years. So if you go to conventions, you know Hillary. She texted me to tell me that it's Kent O'Grady, the episode of Kings of Con that I like so much that has Rob. In the hotel room with Josh Meyer's character. The character is Kent O'Grady. The episode is Bellevue, Washington. So if you're going to watch, if you're going to go to Amazon Prime and uh, watch Kings of Con, and you want to know my favorite episode, first of all, I love them all. Love, love, love. Well, specifically for this QA, I was talking about the one that stars Josh Meyer's. It is. Bellevue, Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Hender. Thank you, Hender Hillary. Thank you, Handler Hillary. And I know you hate being called Handler Hillary. Um, all right. Last question. Last question. Oh, man. Kalia Ter uh, Terrell or Terrell? Hi, Rich. Hi. I'm Kalia. I was wondering, what's the most emotional scene that you've directed, in your opinion, love you. Okay. Um, for starters, I, I wish you guys could see like the Q and A on the uh, on the stream. It is going so fast, which is great. I love that you guys are all involved in getting so active in this process. It's super fun. Super cool. Um, well, there's one obvious question, one one obvious answer to this, which is the scene uh, that was just aired in episode fifteen eighteen, which was. Misha and uh, Jensen together. Castiel's big revelation and then the way he sacrificed himself. So there's that scene. Obviously, gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching, tearjerker scene, beautifully performed. But there's one other scene, and I was moved, 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 just standing there and watching it. But there's one other scene that I will never forget. And that is Just My Imagination. First episode I ever directed. The scene where 
Jared's character, Sam Winchester, was sitting down in the garage talking to Sully, his imaginary friend, and confiding in him that he thought he was going to have to go back in the cage in hell to fight Lucifer. And the fear and vulnerability and almost childlike innocence that Jared tapped into in that scene was beautiful. And Nate Torrance as Sully did a masterful job acting cross room. And it's just a simple but beautiful scene. Um, and I was, we did two takes of that close up, pushing it on Jared. And both times I was incredibly moved and can get choked up just thinking about it. That was a lovely scene, lovely, lovely piece of acting from Jared, lovely piece of connecting from, you know, between Jared and, and Nate. It's just a great, great scene. Proud, proud to be part of it. Thrilled to be able to watch it play out live. Uh, that's it, man. That's the, that's the Rich Spade panel. The, the, the day after the finale of Supernatural 2020 Rich Spade digital panel has come to a close. I want to thank every single one of you people for clocking in here, throwing out questions, or just sitting back and enjoying the, the flow. Um, I wish you all the best. We're in a weird time. But we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it as people together. But it's going to take perseverance. It's going to take keeping a positive attitude. And it's going to take, it's going to take doing the hard work of doing the right thing. Which means wear a mask, wash your hands, stay six feet away from people, resist the urge to socialize too closely, resist the urge to do the things that give the virus a chance to take hold in your life. You don't want that virus taking hold in your life. I'm concerned for every single one of you. I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay healthy, stay happy. Thank you for having me and being a part of this panel. Miss you all. Can't wait to see you in real life. But until then... It's good seeing you digitally. Cheers, everybody.